Okay. Uh, brief update uh, as to where we are. Um, then I'm going to have a do. Uh, I'll show you a bit of crash molding. So, where are we? Um, hang on, let me just zoom out a bit. There we are. Fuselage at this point, ready for painting now. A couple of hinges gone onto the door here. I've got the tail planes in place. Canopies on, can go on easily now because of the way the cockpit slides in. Components at the front, they're all complete. Uh, ailerons are on the wings. Slats are nice and dry on the wings. Seatbelts have been added to the seats, just nice and simple, just give a bit of a hint of something. Uh, when everything's in position, I've joined those two seats together on a little block, they sit nicely basically up inside the fuselage back here uh, i'll take a photograph of that i've done all the final assemblies there's no there's no components left in the box well other than the wing uh, hinges um cowling has been assembled ready for painting i'm having the open cowling actually saying there's no components left in the box the kit very nicely comes with two cowlings closed open so that's going in the spares box but I'm going to use that actually for masking the engine, perhaps, or just general masking, and then use the finished canopy cowl in there. So, engine, so gearbox, uh, and uh, other associated components, like the uh, ignition and timing components. Engine, absolutely superb in this scale. I don't know if you can see this close up, I'll get close to the camera hollowed out exhaust pipes in the kit just generally really really good rendition of a right 3350 i think it is engine with the um oops with the bits in place let me get the right way up that's the right way up so i'll put the top just close there looks really nice Really good rendition of an engine that's ready for some care, some spraying and careful um, painting. Prop hub done, so the prop hub there, nice big four blader sits on the prop, runs off the prop hub. Blades have all been prepared. Undercarriage legs, oh no, it's not on there. Where did I put it? Rear undercarriage leg, quite a chunky assembly. Yeah. Ready to rock. And main gear, main undercarriage legs. Because I'm doing uh, a late version of um, an English Sky Raider, uh, it has blisters on the doors, canopy, uh, you know, clear blisters on the doors, and it has this full um, undercarriage door, shall we call it. On early versions, the windows are flat, I've read, and part of this component, the top part of this component, that bit, is actually attached to the wing, and there's a bigger, there's a bigger fairing on the wing than there is on this. Aircraft. There isn't anything. Oh, uh, not that I showed you those yesterday. They're complete now, polished, finished, ready for painting with the new filler tips. So they look probably not exactly right. I've, I actually looked at it and I'm not going to change it now. But if I took about two centimeters out of the middle, they'd be absolutely perfect for English drop tanks. But they're a little bit longer, but I don't mind it. It doesn't offend me uh, visually. I know it's not technically right, but. I'm quite happy with the way it looks. Right, okay, so the only remaining issue to be solved was the canopy glazing. Now, we know the, the, the Sky Raid is a bubble canopy, a blistered canopy. Now, I thought I'd be clever and I thought I'd chop the back off the blistered canopy, which gave me this component, which is fine. Had I not cracked it in the process of working on it, I might have used it, however, if I put the canopy on what is in effect the right way, it fits nicely at the bottom and nicely at the front, but badly at the back. If I fit the canopy the wrong way, it fits nicely at the bottom and nicely at the back, but badly at the front. And I figured actually, you know, I might get away with that because if the canopy's open and back there, you never actually know. That little flat up the canopy was offending me though from the front I could have lived with it just I think 
But I decided, should I do something else? And as I was messing around deciding, I cracked this. So that made the decision for me. So what I've done, using this, I put a bit of masking tape inside. It's not there anymore, that's the shiny glass. I put a bit of masking tape inside and a bit of masking tape inside and I filled it with car body filler. I then popped it out in tr true blue Peter fashion, skimmed over it with a layer of plastic, uh, with a layer of filler to make it larger uh so that it loses that flat i just added a little bit lengthwise because whenever you plug molding or vac forming if you have something exactly the same length the radius of the plastic ends up being part of the component you actually need so you need to get that radius curve of the plastic out of the way so this component's about a mil and a half each end so in total about three mil longer than the gap here it's a little bit fatter than the original canopy at the front and it's a little bit fatter than the original canopy at the back you can see if i do a measure up there you can see how bigger how much larger that is at each side of the canopy there that will give me a better shape to fit in here so all i've got to do now is the famous old crash molding there are a few different ways of doing this technique and i'm going to see if i can get one to work on camera i've actually done one that i know is good enough to use okay so I thought I'd practice first before I'm making a twit of myself on camera, but hopefully it'll work a second time around. Oh, look at that. I've got a tea delivery. Thank you. Splendid. So I'm hoping it'll work a second time around, and I'm just going to do a demo for you to show it. So there are a couple of ways of crash moulding plastic, and one way is you would get the footprint of this shape, the square, and you'd cut that footprint out of a piece of balsa wood, and then you'd tape a clear bit of plastic around it and you'd heat that plastic up and you'd plunge this through the plastic hole and actually that's probably the better way of doing it but because I didn't have any very large pieces of plastic I only had some scraps left um, what I did was literally drape moulding it and pulled it over and just got it tight enough so I'm going to heat a piece of plastic up I've got an old piece of plastic here it doesn't actually look like it you just might think oh I'll throw it in the bin but once that plastic's heated it will actually try and reform itself to a flat piece again so it's, this is quite usable again even if you messed up the first time I'm not going to use this component I'm only demoing with it I've also got here trusty good old faithful glove based on the fact that this stuff gets pretty hot you don't want to burn your fingers okay I'm just going to throw that in the box now to heat this and hold it with a pair of pliers and this might work it might not work but the simple fact of the matter is there's one i did earlier that has worked that i'm going to use so if this goes a little bit south it's not nothing to worry about but it'll give you an idea of how it's done i, I set a piece of wood into the canopy as i was making it to make it easy to hold to sand but also knowing that i needed to either mount it to something for drape molding it or hold it for plunge molding it and as it happens i just glued it to this block of balsa i'll pop it off and throw it away later but the block of balsa is undamaged so we're going to heat this up and to heat it up we're going to use a good old-fashioned heat gun and i'm going to heat it up off screen so i don't accidentally melt anything in the background because that wouldn't be a very good idea but you'll see as soon as i come back on screen with hot floppy plastic i'm going to grab hold of it with my glove and i'm just going to pull that plastic over this component and hopefully you'll see it work if it doesn't you know it does work because i've got one that i'm going to trim out but as a demo i'll see if i can do it for you on screen so at the moment i'm just heating it up and it'll start to go pretty floppy pretty quickly piece of plastic that's gone as floppy as i think it needs to be you can hold it over the plastic there and i'm going to pull and there we are it's worked a treat and make sure that the edges are all pushed down around once you've done it a few times you end up with asbestos fingers i can break that off there now get rid of that block but we can see now with a few seconds work 
we've got a perfectly usable canopy. This trimming all of this rubbish off here is very easy. This canopy I'll throw into my spares box in case I need to plug anything again. But now, take my glove off. I'm going to take the canopy off. Out of here. Pull it out. Come on. There we are. Canopy. Perfectly reusable as a mould. It was polished, by the way, before I did anything to maintain that shiny finish. And there's a perfectly usable canopy. Hidden within all of the rubbish that's surrounding it. Just drop that one. I'm going to pick up my good one and I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to just trim. With my scissors. Oh, an interesting point while I'm just doing this. My name isn't supposed on the YouTube channel, isn't some sort of fancy proclamation of me being a master model maker. It's the reason I'm doing the YouTube channel is I'm doing a master's in model making. Um, hence the name of the title. Not that I think myself as a master model maker in the slightest. It's I should have said master's model maker, but that was taken. So was every other combination of the word I could find other than master model maker 57, I think it was. Anyway, I'm rambling. There is the actual master, the plug. Here is one that I can now class as spare. That can go in the spares box as well. Here's the bits of, I don't know what you want to call it, flash, detritus, anything that we're trimming off it. I'm only trimming it very basically here to give you an idea of what we're talking about. I'll have to put a little bit more care and effort in shortly to uh, get it trimmed back to the point where it's a usable canopy. If I just trim the main bits of rubbish off this, just the main bits, like I said, I'm not trying to do it accurately at the moment. I'm just trying to demo its usefulness more than anything and dispel some of the mess. It's, it's, it's surprising how many people will build airfix kits or build Tamiya kits or whatever and that's not a disparagement I love building airfix and Tamiya kits this is a trumpeter kit but not ever consider stepping out of the comfort zone and modifying something or trying something and as I said I think in an earlier video I certainly wouldn't crack into a hundred pound kit straight away but you could do this to a 72nd or a 48 scale kit and learn exactly the same techniques now we're not there yet but we can see now Here's our new canopy that's getting closer to the right size. There's our old canopy, move it over here, that was actually no good, too small. You see the old canopy fits inside. Perfectly nice. It's obviously going to be too big when I fit it in place on the Sky Raider here because I've not trimmed it down yet, but you'll get an idea. Can you see how it's going to fit quite nicely when I trim the ends off? and get it into the right position. I'll come back, I'll show you a video of it trimmed and fitting in the right place, because it will fit. It just, it, there's too much, uh, still too much material on the uh, in the plastic there. So, um, let's see if I can just trim a bit more. There is, there's a little bit of a learning curve to doing this. Um, one of the, one of the, things with the learning curve is making sure you don't what's called over attenuate the plastic you don't stretch it too far because what's good if you look at this you can see where am i here we are it retains a one mil thickness all the way around if you pull too hard it'll be one mil up here but the ends down here could skin down to about half a mil end up with a canopy that's too floppy as you can see that is a nice thick canopy for its size it retains some strength in its form, which is a good thing. It matches the injection molding that's there better. I'm just gonna quick offer up to this, see if I can get it close to fitting. It's, it is very close. It's still probably three, two, three mil too long.
there we are that's starting to fit nicely now we see the difference now this end this bottom will have a little flange put on it in a minute but that's starting to fit quite well so i've got the new canopy there for the sky raider that's based on an improved version of the old canopy that just doesn't really fit on any level at the back here so i'm quite pleased with that it needs finessing now and i'll go away and finesse it but it's getting pretty close to where i want it because ultimately the canopy is going to be open here anyway so you can see into the cockpit so we've got that nice and we can now got enough material to slide back so hopefully that was of some use in terms of uh, perhaps you could call it a little tutorial a little demonstration it's not rocket science it really is pretty straightforward i'd urge you just to have a go even if it little 70 second scale spitfire canopies things like that it's quite easy to mold no you know no difference in terms of uh complexity uh to mold arguably they're easy you can use thinner materials you know but as long as you've got a little heat gun for canopies if you're molding larger components you need you can use a proper or create your own proper vac form bed it would be entirely feasible to create this component um, I could turn that into a vac form pattern by simply cutting it in half and then just basically putting, you know, some um, little bit of extra thickness on to take care of the radiuses. But it has a fairly natural cut line. Um, it would take a little bit of work to make it a vac form component. I'm not going to because I don't need to. I'm perfectly happy with it solid. But if I was producing it as a kit, it could be vac form or it could be a resin casting. Anyway. There's an unused one in case I mess up this one. There is my old one that's now going to go in the bin. And there is my pattern that I'm going to keep in case I ever do another one of these. Or in case I ever need a clear pattern, that shape. Don't know what that... Or even modify. I could modify that still. Carve into it and tweak it slightly. It's um, reminiscent of a few different aircraft canopies. A bit like a, a Malcolm Hood on a Mustang. Probably not quite as... Um, bulbous enough and got no idea if it's the right size or scale for 24 certainly be too big for 32nd but uh, it's there anyway as a piece of material enough from me that's it